Good evening, good evening. This is Wednesday night Bible study with fellow citizens of the household of God. We have finished the book of Hosea and now we're in the book of Joel. Joel, Joel, whichever you prefer. We're going to be going over the first chapter tonight. I pray that you all are in a place to be able to hear from the Lord what the Spirit is saying unto you, the church. We're going to open up with a word of prayer and then go right into tonight's study material. So get your mind on God, grab pen, paper, get your Bibles, get ready. A word from the Lord is on the way. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you. We bless you. We ask you for forgiveness of all sin. God, forgive us of the sins of our minds, our bodies, and our spirits. God, put us in right relationship with you that we may hear from you on tonight. God, set the record straight. Set our hearts and our minds focused on your word. Anoint our ears that we may hear what the Spirit is saying unto us as a church. And then, God, anoint my mouth that I may only speak what you've said. Let the hearers be blessed, nourished, and helped in Jesus' name we pray. Those who agree, say amen. God bless you. All right. Now, <clears throat> the book of Joel is going to continue to deal with the children of Israel. Um, Joel's name means Yahweh is God. Uh, they believe that this was written during the young days of young King Jehoash, who was under the regency of priest when he ascended to the throne over Judah. What you're going to hear in a familiar echo is the fact that we are continually going in and out of punishment because of our life's choices. And there are some severities of punishment that we engage in because of the severity of choices that we've made. If our rebellion has been so long and God is patiently, compassionately getting our attention and we continuously reject him, then the punishment to come is one of great circumstance. So now the book of Joel is going to open up with, uh, let's start at verse one. The word of the Lord came to Joel, the son of Pethuel. Verse two, hear this, ye old men, and give ear, all ye inhabitants of the land. Hath this been in your days, even in the days of your fathers, tell your children of it and let your children tell their children and their children another generation. What's the purpose behind us telling folk, passing things down? Well, <clears throat> it is a memo for all to remember. What is the purpose of remembering? so that perhaps only one group has to go through the severity of what they're getting ready to go through. If I tell you of the hardship that I, listen, here, here's, thank you God for a great example. Listen, if I tell you that when I went into this certain building that it cost me literally one of my arms, they took one of my arms before I came out. Are you gonna go in there to see what, that, what, what it's like in there? Do you treasure both of your arms? That's the purpose of passing down information from generation to generation so that the same mistakes may not be repeated twice, may not be repeated down through the, so that you don't pop up one day and start wanting to blame something and say it's a family curse. No, you just keep making the same mistakes down through your bloodline because your bloodline has decided 
that they didn't want to pass down the information to you to make you understand, hey, this is something you need to take serious and you need to look at. Joe Willis is, is advising that we all pay attention, that we all listen, and that we pass it down to our children and our children's children. Verse 5, awake, ye drunkards, and weep and howl, all ye drinkers of wine, because of the new wine, for it is cut off from your mouth. Get up, wake up. You can't sleep through your punishment. Some folk want to lay down and let the, let the ill times pass. It don't work like that. You've got to live this. Just like you walked in your decisions, you got to walk through this punishment too. Some folk think that, you know, they get, a, they get a free pass if they just go to sleep. It'll be a, and then they start singing, it'll be all over in the morning. No, this ain't. You got to go through this. You've got to learn to turn from your wicked. You got to learn. Now, when it says that God cut off the new wine, God cut off your provisions. See, listen, some folk will argue that God is not a God of us having a good time. I would argue that's not true. Because when Jesus went to the wedding, he was all in favor of them having a good time. It didn't mean he participated in it, but he did make it possible for them to continue. It was a joyous occasion. I don't know why church folk believe that Christian folk can't have joy, can't enjoy the fruits of the land. I'm not an advocate for folk to go out and drink. That's not what I'm telling you. What I'm telling you is we need to stop focusing so much on the fact that they out there drinking and focus on the fact, okay, but what kind of relationship do they have with God? What, 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 are, what are they saying to God? What are they doing with God? What are we doing? Instead, we're condemning them, causing them to run away from God because they don't believe God is a fan of fun. Y yes, he is. But then when God is the, is the supplier, here, God says, look, it's cut off. You folk, you drunkards, you people seeking the supply of wine that I've supplied, is cut off. Get up, weep, cry out, pray. Go into grieving. What is grieving? Go into sackcloth and ashes. That means you begin to fall on your face before the Lord because you know you've sinned and come short of the glory of God. That's what that means. When God, when God started removing the plethora of things that we so easily enjoy, especially in the United States, you don't believe me? Y'all think, look, everybody was walking around talking about COVID over, COVID over. They got more cases now than a little bit. Y'all keep playing with God if you want to. We haven't been but two years into this thing. That's a short period of time for you to learn how to sit down and be still. So then when you come out of it, you still don't come out of it. It's still not back to the return of what it pre-COVID was because now we got high gas prices, high food prices. We ain't got no baby formula. We lose, we got monkey pox on the ride. There's so many things that have taken place now. It's like, okay, I'm so tired of being cooped up in there. Okay, go for it. You can go out there. I'm okay with that. I would just ask you that you put on the whole armor of God. That's all I'm saying. I may not be the travel buddy you want. I'll show, look at some pictures and go there mentally. I promise you I will. And I will truly enjoy myself so much so it'll be a vivid memory that I think I already been there through your picture. But I would advise you, I'm going to pray God keep them safe, but you need to take the Lord along with you. That's the whole focus is that we've gotten away from God. We've gotten away from seeking God's face. We've gotten away from the things that we've gotten away from the fact that we know God is our supplier of health, wealth, safety. 
Look at verse 6 and 7. We're going to stay here for a little bit because I really want you to focus on this. Verse 6 and 7. For a nation is come up upon my land, strong and without number, whose teeth are the teeth of a lion, and he hath the cheek teeth of a great lion. He hath laid my vine waste and barked my fig tree. He hath made it clean bare and cast it away. The branches thereof are made white. What is God talking about? He's talking about the devourer that he has released, that he is no longer holding back, that locust that changed. It, it, he, he changed it, that locust, that thing. That Listen, I, I'm going to go back and show you. Verse 4, that which the palmer worm hath left, hath the locust eaten. And that which the locust hath left, hath the canker worm eaten. And that which the canker worm hath left, the caterpillar eaten. Different stages of locust. So much so that they've come in and they've devoured everything. Your ability to provide for yourself, gone. Your ability to provide for your family, gone. Your ability to go out to the government and get help, gone. Everybody's hurting. That's what people don't get. If God doesn't hold back the devourer for our sake, we are all consumed. I'll show you. Go to Malachi 3 and 11. Malachi 3 and 11. Now, this is after we've done our devotion in giving to God. He said, see if I won't open up the Wednesday for you, but okay. Then he says, look, this is what else he does. He says, and I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes and he shall not destroy the fruits of your ground. Neither shall your vine cast her fruit before time in the field said the Lord of hosts. God not only holds back the devourer because that's his job. He takes his job seriously. He's going to devour. He's going to uh, remove all resources. He's going to eat up what you got coming in and what you think you had going out. He's just going to eat it up. What does that look like? Some of y'all know what it looked like right now. You got more bills than you got income. You got more problems in your family than you do got solutions. You got more ailments in your body than you do have good days. The devourer. Y'all got to see who, who's at work here. If God doesn't hold him back, then this is what happens. Your fruit of your labor casts itself on the ground before it comes to full maturity. What does that look like? Before you actually, hey, thank you, Holy Ghost. Before you actually get your check is spent. Make it make sense to you now. Think about it. You've already planned where this is going, where this is going, where this is going, where this is going. And by the time you get your check, ain't nothing left. That's the devourer. The devourer is after you. The devourer is on your case. You need to get it right with God. Now, the only way you secure the devourer from not devouring you is that you allow God to be your CFO. God gave this message a while back. I really enjoyed God talking about who is on the C levels in our lives. If God is your chief financial, financial officer, because you make sure to take care of God, God is going to rebuke the devourer for your sake. Y'all go to Malachi 3 and read it for yourself. Back all the way up to verse 9. 9, 10, shall a man rob God? Just go on and read it all. And then you see the benefit of having God rebuking the devourer. The people of God here in the book of Joel, the Lord has released his hand and let the devourer go. Now they have no place to run. There's no, there's no grain in 
in the, in the mill. There's no grain out there. There's no grain in the field, no grain in the mill, no grain in the storehouse, no nothing. Why? Because the devourer has come. Has taken away your ability to do. Has taken away your ability to provide. And you want to sit there and twiddle your thumbs and act like you don't know why. I'm telling you why. Disobedience helps you to move God's hand. Rebellion helps you to move God's hand. What do you mean, Bishop, when you say move God's hand? God's hand is at work at all times in our lives and we just don't know it. He's holding back the devourer. He's stopping sickness from overtaking us. He's stopping bad dreams from consuming our sleep. He's stopping all of these things. He's stopping random shooters from coming into our job, shooting up the place. He's stopping, he's stopping things. All glory to God. He's stopping things. And you give him no credit. You give him no thank you. You give him no praise. And, and, and at the same time, you rebel against the truth of God for your life. You just do whatever you want to do. Go wherever you want to go. Say whatever you want to say. And you know you're not supposed to. Children of Israel got to deal with that. Listen, verse 8. Lament. Huh. Y'all know what lament mean? Grieve, cry, yell. Huh. Lament like a virgin girded with sackcloth for the husband of her youth. Lament like a woman who is betrothed, spoken for, and her husband die before she can consummate the marriage. Somebody, don't get lost in the translation. I need you to go back to that time and understand what that meant. When, I'm, when a woman was betrothed to a man, you might as well say they were married because they were spoken for. She did not have an eye for any other man, neither did he have an eye for any other woman. And until the date of marriage and the marriage were to happen before the elders and the elders gave their uh, word of approval, and the priest did what he was supposed to do, then they would go consummate the marriage. From that consummation comes the contractual agreement proof that we are married. Because now we finna have a child. So y'all done put it all out of context. When that child comes, now that woman has contractual uh, claim to her husband's fortune, whatever it might be. You got to remember back then, the man was the one who gained all of the monies and da -da 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 -da, and brought it all home and made, and the wife made the home a home made the land the land, you know. So duties were different now. So if she was betrothed to a man, her father was dependent on this man to come and take this daughter off his hand because he'd been paying for this daughter. I need you to come on and get your responsibility. When's the wedding? It's, it's next week, all right. And then he up and dies. Well, she has no proof, just word of mouth. She don't have a child. He doesn't, he doesn't owe her anything. Everything reverts back to, now, nothing has changed. I mean, on, on the other hand, you know, but the Lord is saying here, you're going to cry just like her because she really wanted to get out the house. She really wanted to be on her own. She really wanted to have a family. She really wanted to show her adulthood of her coming of age, of her independence. She really wanted to be away and cut the purse strings from mom and dad. She you're going to cry like that. Why? Because of your sin choices. Y'all got to see this thing clearly. Joel is dealing with it deep. Listen, verse 9 and 10. We finna deal with everybody being cut off. The meat offering and the drink offering is cut off from the house of the Lord. The priest, the Lord's ministers mourn. The field is wasted, the land mourneth, for the corn is wasted, the new wine is dried up, the oil is languisheth. No provision for any. For all stand in the place of rebellion. Nobody is guilt free. So y'all can stop talking about I'm a good person. You stop that foolishness. 
everybody is guilty. Everybody has something to repent for. Everybody has something that they must turn from, even if it is a mental mistake. What you talking about, Bishop? Sometimes folk got a mental mistake of doubting, fear, anxiety. And the whole time God is, is saying to you, have I failed you? Have I ever not come through? So why are you allowing those thoughts to overtake you? To put you in a bad frame of mind? To make you believe I won't make a way? Why are you doing that? You, you, you need to get that together. You need to trust me with all your heart. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not to your own understanding. I'm going to give you one again. I didn't say it too many times. I'm going to say it again. Lean not unto Google. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not unto Google. I'm not changing the word of God. I'm just trying to help you understand what God is telling you. Y'all go to Google more than you do God. You need to stop that foolishness. Verse 11 and 12. Now, we finna get deep real quick. Verse 11, be ye ashamed, O ye husbandmen, howl, O ye vine dressers for the wheat and for the barley, because the harvest of the field is perished. The vine is dried up and the fig tree languisheth, the pomegranate tree, the palm tree also, and the apple tree. Even all the trees of the field are withered because joy is withered away from the sons of men. Be ashamed of your wrong that leads you to the loss you're in, not being able to do for reason of disconnect. You can't go out and provide for your family, pick apples from a tree in somebody else's yard. There ain't no apples on it. No figs. You can't provide for your family because of your wrong choices. Your family can't sustain itself because of wrong choices. Why do you continually make them thinking that nobody is paying attention? You the man. You the woman. You make your own decision. Okay. Okay. Well, then, shh, be quiet when the devourer comes and devours everything. And listen, for those of you out there who think you're in a good place right now, I want you to understand something. The devourer comes and can devour anything. In this day and time, the devourer can devour your peace, your joy. He just said because you, you lost your joy for, the, for, for what you do for God, let, let me go ahead and remove joy completely off the table. You don't need it no more because you're not interested in the joy of the Lord as much. You're not interested in that. So let me just go ahead and take that off the table. Your peace, your security. God says, I know my thoughts, I think towards you. Thoughts of peace and not of war. If this is not a war-stricken country, somebody say, no, we're not in war. Yes, we are. Black people are still fighting to be equal. That ain't never stopped. We still in the war. People are still fighting to feel safe at home. Got folks breaking out of prison off of a prison bus, killing five people before he gone. Be ashamed. Then he tells us in verse 14 how to turn this thing around. Y'all ready? God is not going to tell you all of the things that are coming and all of the things that have been without telling you what the solution is. Here's the solution, people of God. Verse 14, sanctify ye of fast. Too simple. Mm. Call a solemn assembly. Gather the elders and all the inhabitants of the land into the house of the Lord, your God, and cry unto the Lord. What's a fast, Bishop? When you make your flesh obey the spirit of God, 
when you deny to make when you deny to your flesh its desires. Your flesh is not going to want to come under the subjugation of the law, not going to want to be subject to the law. It's not going to want to sit there and follow God's word. It's not going to want to look in the word of God. It's not going to want to pray every day. It's not going to, you make your flesh do it. You make your flesh obey. You make your flesh come subject under, under the authority of God. You make your flesh get in line. He said, you, you, you fast. Then you call an assembly. When you call an assembly, you get people together and you begin to speak the word of God over them so that they may know where to go, how to go, how to get there. How they do it is up to them, but they, they need to come together as an assembled people and cry out to God. God, we need you. We surrender. God, we denounce the prince of this world. The world, the flesh, Satan, we denounce that God. We give up, we surrender ourselves to you, God. Clean us, make us whole. Forgive us for allowing our relationship to go into lack. See, they were dealing with a young king who, who depended strongly on the advice of the priest. Well, if the priest ain't right, what you gonna get? I'll say it again. If the priest ain't right, and listen, we in America have the biggest pool of preachers who just out there doing all kinds of God knows what, not feeding the people at all. That foolishness foolery and we would have it to be so because we like it we like the show we like the lights we like the dancing we like the music we like the drama we like the yee folks screaming and hollering we like it we like to see it we like to sit back and make fun of it we love it but is God pleased and while you sitting back looking at this foolishness go on and you ain't said nothing about it, are you a partaker of it? Absolutely, because you're not disagreeing with it. You're participating in it by sitting there. Bible tells you to come out from among them. Sometimes to them is the people that you've been thinking that, no, no, they're doing the most. You need to stop. Get real with God. Get serious with God. Call a fast. Get the people together. Preach. Teach. Get real. Rebel against the flesh to promote spiritual obedience. Fasting is to bring a more secure spiritual connection. We need to pay attention to the total loss and devastation behind the disobeying. Following the desires of the flesh and not God brings that what we pass down the wisdom from our struggles and shame. I'll say it again. I'll say it again. We need to pay attention to the total loss and devastation behind disobeying, following the desires of our flesh and not God. That's what we pass down in the wisdom to our children, the struggle, the shame, to generations coming up, we pass that down. We tell them, hey, we walked this road and it was a bumpy one. We lost some things on the way because of our disobedience. Don't do it. I lost an arm because I went in. I'm telling you now, don't go in there. Don't do that. I'm not saying that you would lose an arm. That's not what I'm saying. I don't know what you would lose. You could lose your life. Don't go in there. I wish it were that simple, but it's not. Now, in days of old, they used to preach it that way. They felt that it was that simple. That if I told you not to go into, forgive me, I'm finna date myself. If I told you not to go into a beer joint, don't go in there. Here's the problem. I don't have to go into a beer joint to be subject to that spirit that's in there. Because that spirit don't live there. He comes out with the people who try. So if I hang around the wrong folk, I still got the beer joint mentality. 
We need to get deeper. We need to teach folk. Hey, 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 there are some spirits. There are some influences. There are some things that you just don't want to be around. You don't want to yourself, introduce yourself to them. That includes some of these things that you look up online that you just travel into and you feel like you're not hurting nobody. But what you don't understand is the seeds are being planted and they sprout up later. While you sleep, they're growing. They're maturing. They're germifying. Yeah, y'all know what I mean. They they germinating. There you go, growing and doing that. You got to be careful. If we don't begin to sift through the information that is being fed to our children, they're going to grow up with knowledge of things that we know nothing about, which will lead them astray away from God because the people of God never addressed it. There are some subjects that the people of God just be quiet about. Shh, don't talk. No, we can't. We got to be open and honest in all of it. Tell them our mistakes. Let God feed us what information they need to hear. Not that old school stuff. Just don't go. Just don't drink. Just don't. Wait. Help me understand. Because these children today are inquisitive. And you just telling them no ain't going to get it. It doesn't matter that we just read in the word of God where a disobedient people are now being consumed by the devourer. I got to tell you how that makes sense today. How does it make sense? Well, I just told you. Your paycheck is spent before you even get it. Jeremiah 14, 3 and 4. Jeremiah 14, 3 and 4 is going to deal with that shame. And their nobles have sent their little ones to waters. They came to the pits and found no water. They returned with their vessels empty. They were ashamed and confounded and covered their heads because the ground is checked. For there was no rain in the earth. The plowmen were ashamed. They covered their heads. Verse 7. O oh Lord, though our iniquities testify against us, do thou it for thy name's sake, for our backsliding are many. We have sinned against thee. You come to the realization that you sinned against God, then it's between you and God. Get it right. Don't sit there in trouble. Don't sit there in shame. Don't sit there. Get it right. Go before God. Lay down. But look. Prostrate yourself before God. That means stretch out, lay out on the floor. Just lay out and cry out to God. Deliver me, O Lord, from the influences of my own self, from the influences of the world, from the influences of the internet, from the influences of other social circles. God, deliver me. Help me to be strong in you and in your power, not by might nor by power. By my spirit, say the Lord, Lord, send your spirit to help deliver me out of the trouble I'm in. I got myself in it before your name's sake, God. I call myself your believer. I call myself a Christian for your name's sake, God. Come, come rescue me. Come get me out. You got to get serious. You got to, you got to break the hold that the enemy has on you to cause you to think everything is okay just because God is slow to wrath. Listen, just because God is slow to wrath don't mean he's not going to get there, but when he get there, you're going to wish he hadn't. Just because God is slow to wrath doesn't mean he's not going to get there because when he gets there, you're not going to like it. We're going to go over Joel chapter 2 next week. I pray that you guys are ready. To receive a word from the Lord. There, it is filled with lots and lots of good information. I pray uh, the blessing of the Lord upon all. That God would heal. Deliver set free. Cause us to strengthen our relationship to him. We give him glory, honor, and praise. In Jesus name we all agree and say amen. God bless you. We'll see you Saturday at 1130. For Saturday morning worship service. Thank you and good night. We love you. Bye bye.